Carmen, dear chairman, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, Carmen fought me and asked to talk about severely ill patients. I can't present you a good trial, but I will present some cases. So um, actually to start with, so immune absorption, actually the different systems established as a treatment for patients with severe autoimmune disease and no further medical treatment option, like myasthenia gravis. So I, it can be done in a clinical setting, also in an ambulatory setting, and actually it's a well-established therapy in autoimmune diseases. And then I would like to state that help apheresis, which is also discussed by many patients, is not immune absorption. So help uh, apheresis is heparin-induced extracorporeal LDL precipitation. It leads to a reduction of LDL cholesterol and lipoprotein little a. As a side effect, uh, it can reduce, uh, or it reduces fibrinogen, which may improve micro, uh, microcirculation. This can, may improve symptoms, but it's something different, yeah? So, and we don't have any results yet. So I know that uh, patients are seeking for help of aphoresis, but actually we don't have uh, any, any data. And I know there are many centers, uh, they are uh, offering help of aphoresis, and it actually it's different. And then there's an advertisement of, uh, for example, inospheresis. It's advertised as the most effective method of filtering ever environmental toxins. And actually, question mark, because it's not a good method to remove toxins, because it's simple double filtration. It has nothing to do with immune absorption and so on. And then there's an advertisement of toxophoresis. Actually, for me, it's fake treatment. Don't do it. Uh, I know there are some reports, but actually, it's really different. Yeah. And uh, then uh, this is what you have to uh, note. Okay, let's move on to immune absorption. In a clinical setting, you may uh, need central lines, but actually it's not uh, uh, necessary. And I think uh, Elisa said they're also using peripheral veins, so you can use peripheral veins. And by immune absorption, you can effectively reduce immunoglobulins. I think the, uh, Elisa has shown it, um, that uh, you can, with the first treatment, and, this, and then you can see a reduction of IgGs. And actually, as I mentioned, established therapy in certain conditions of autoimmune diseases like myasthenia gravis or multiple sclerosis. And the patient here, uh, she is a patient with multiple sclerosis. She uh, is a gynecologist, and he, she had an acute exacerbation. She already had uh, 7,000 milligram of methylprednisolone, and she responded quite well, even within the first treatment. So. Um, Concerning parameters, if you want to, or, or when we, um, I just want to show you that because if you want to, uh, uh, to look what the rep response of the patient is, you, it's difficult, I think, with objective criteria. I think you need kind of these uh, self-reporting uh, questionnaires. And if we use the health questionnaire, also the fatigue scale, and uh, later I will show you the visual analog scale. So to start with the first post-COVID patient we treated, um, um, it was a patient, independent coach, living in, in Berlin. She presented three years ago, and post-COVID syndrome was diagnosed actually at Carmen's institution here in, in, in Berlin uh, three years and a half ago. And by immune absorption, uh, um, she had improvement from a bell scale from 30 to 60. So this was our um, uh, uh, index patient. And now let's talk about patients with severe disease, the severe disease and what is severe disease. So actually, I'm, I'm an internist, so actually you can say the bell, that, that bad ridden is for sure severe disease, but also involvement of, uh, of, of organs like brain or heart, I think, is also severe disease. And this is a post-vaccination uh, patient um, um, with um, pericardial um, effusion. And um, she uh, also presented three years ago, and she got this after vaccination. She, she never had a COVID infection so far. And um, she uh, was diagnosed with severe post-vaccination multi-system syndrome with this pericardial effusion uh, three years and a half ago. She got a pericardial synthesis. She had surgical pericardial fenestration three years ago. And then she had also the typical symptoms uh, of MECFS, like fatigue, brain fog, PEM, and so on. And actually, she um, responded quite well. So after the third treatment, she mentioned that sleeping through was possible. Before that, it was not possible. After fifth treatment, she said, well, she felt like newborn. And she added two more treatments on her own record because of the success. And uh, four weeks later, she had improvement in scale from 20 to 75. And I would like to present uh, um, another case uh, in my term severe disease, 47-year-old physician, 
uh, post-COVID uh, um, with MECFS, and she had cerebral vasculitis in the uh, uh, brain MRI with clear pearl-like caliber fluctuations. I'm not a neurologist, but I think two different university hospitals in Germany that said that she had cerebral vasculitis. Also, she had, again, she had fatigue, brain fog, and so on, dyspnea. She had GPCR and neuronal antibodies. And uh, with five immunoabsorption treatments, she improved uh, from 35 to 65. And she was very happy because she could read a book or she could walk the dog, so she had improvement in her life. But it, she was not 100% recovered, uh, I have to admit. In the last case with severe disease, so a single case, is this patient, it's a male, 40-year-old, also post-COVID with MECFS, and he was totally bedridden, fatigue, brain fog, PAM, also GPCR, and neural antibodies positive, and with immune absorption improvement. But the improvement is, uh, for him it was improvement, so he was totally bedridden, and during treatment uh, he could mobilize or to a wheelchair, and later after he could walk short distances at home, and the bell scale hit improvement from zero to 20, so actually there's lots uh, which could be more improved perhaps by B cell depletion and so on, but he was quite happy with that because otherwise uh, he would lie in bed and he comes now every four to five weeks for treatment uh, and uh, is uh, very happy about this, but actually um, we need to, to do more, yeah. So um, the first nine patients, um, i just show you um, the, uh, the health questionnaire. Um, how the individual responses are, they're different. Uh, you see the blue column before immune absorption, the, uh, the, uh, the red ones after immune absorption, directly after and four weeks later, uh, uh, the gray ones. And you can see uh, different responses. And I have to admit, we have patients like patient number four who does not have any response, and he had a deterioration even after treatment. I think you likely due to, due to crash. Um, but this uh, con convinced us that we can uh, uh, continue uh, uh, doing that treatment, um, um, this, uh, but we don't have a control group and for sure we need uh, um, RCTs. And um, these are the results of 24 patients um, before immune absorption, the health, uh, health questionnaire uh, improvement from 35 to 58 uh, in the health questionnaire, and in the visual fatigue severity scale, improvement from 3.2 to 5.2. So, but only, again, case here is no control group, we need RCTs. And then uh, yesterday evening, Carmen said, please uh, report about the severe patient. And what I tried to do, um, I tried to, um, to, um, to, to group uh, the whole group of 24 patients divided into the 12 more severe ill and the 12 uh, healthier ones, and um, so these are in the health questionnaire um, the mean values before immune absorption, so um, 12 patients with an initial scoring of 15 to 30 and the other one initial scoring of 40 to 70, yeah. And after treatment, actually both groups uh, responded, so actually also severe cases uh, can respond to that treatment. Again, only case series, no control group, we need RCTs, but they're on the way. So let's summarize my results. So immune absorption, a therapeutic approach in MECFS. In case series, we see improvement in many patients, but not in all. Similar results in patients with CV disease. Also, again, only case series. More research on mechanisms is needed. And the results of control studies are expected soon. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. I think that one of the important things is that you showed also post-vaccination ME, that it's almost equal as post-infectious ME. Are there any comments or questions? I see that the coffee as well as the cakes are stimulating the stomach. There's one, one question here. You're resistant, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just one short question. I have a question. Did the immune um, absorption affect the um, organ affection? Like that, you, you um, showed pictures of the uh, cerebral um, vasculitis, yeah. vasculitis and the cardiac infusion. With the so did you control this and did this have any effect? Uh, with the pericardial fusion actually improved it because actually there was uh, um, uh, 
after fenestration, it was a plural effusion, and then we checked by ultrasound, there was, uh, it, was, it was gone actually. And with the cerebral vasculitis, actually, I don't know the results of the control yet, but the symptoms improved, yeah. And how long was the uh, follow-up? Um, from which patient? So uh, All of them, did you have like... So a ma maximum for now is three years. So example, uh, uh, some patients, they, they come back after a while. So some patients come after one year, and then they do another treatment session, yes. Jürgen, you are under the observation of Carmen. Short question. Very, very short. Uh, uh, it is easier to get a pericardial fenestration by a surgeon than an adequate therapy? Did they do any anti-inflammatory therapy in this patient? She, ha she had everything. She had steroids, she had colchicum, col 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 everything. So she had these yeah, steroids before, but yeah, yeah. not yes. yet. And she went to really many, many hospitals. Uh, and, and I think due to the pericardial effusion, she was not uh, said to be a psychiatric patient, actually. Uh, yeah, so, because uh, this is a, a drug, yeah, it's a, uh, you can... Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. thanks a lot. Thank you also for mentioning the other techniques, um, because there's a lot of confusion. So, now we have...